think all of us, I'm trying to make this work. It'll work eventually. Right. <laughs> That's where it starts. In the brown girl in the ring, what we see is a sort of invitation to be oneself, to shake, rattle, and roll the way we want to do, just for that, those brief measures of music where we get to do what we want to do. And that's where I locate the beginning or the genesis of the wine as we know it. Um, it is a kind of, I don't know what, uh, I guess when I used to play the, the game when I was a young girl, I used to feel completely in control, completely in control of that moment, completely in control of even the future of that moment. So I want to kind of just go into what we're talking about when we're talking about a definition of the wine. Now, there are several definitions of the wine. I'll just give you my little humble definition of the wine. It is either a rotation, a gyration, or an oscillation of the pelvic region, <laughs> <laughs> usually done in rhythmic style to music in a festive or recreational environment. Take, a, take note of this. You cannot whine if your legs are straight. Try it. It's not going to happen. You have to bend your knees and then do the wine. So I have a couple of friends here who will help me demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm calling on Elisha and on Simeon to show us the basic techniques of whining. Thank you. <laughs> they work hard at that, huh? let me tell you. <laughs> so let's go back to the brown girl in the ring. When we look at the work of Dr. J.D. Elder, who did much, a lot of cultural anthropology back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and whose work is really seminal in the, in the study of different aspects of, of ethnography in our country and other countries in the Caribbean. He locates those types of song games, like the brown girl in the ring, in our psychosocial history. And that one is a very painful history. It's one of subjugation. It's one where we had to deal with colonialism. We had to deal with enslavement, indentureship. As you see, I've just picked out, there was a very long quote, so I didn't, I didn't bother to bog you down with the whole quote. But the fact is that this mere, this, these snippets of the quote have so many words that speak to subjugation. It's a real, it's, it's, it's a real presence even in, a, in, a, in today, uh, in, our, in our lives today. But it, ha it, it harkens back to our history. It harkens back to those, those painful moments. And what that has to do with the song games and what the song games have to do with that is the fact that they try to, to countermand that. What happens is, much like if you think of Fela Kuti, and when he says music is the weapon, it's the weapon against subjugation. In the Caribbean, the hip is the weapon. The hip is what en enjoins us to say, no, we're fighting back. We're fighting for our freedom. We're going to be what we can be. We're going to be the best us that we can be. And we're showing it through our hips. And that is why I think we, so all of us tap into this notion of whining. Some of us reject it, we don't want it, that's fine, it's a free country, it's a free world. Most of the world is free, not all. But the fact is we can't deny it. It's something that we feel very, um, in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago especially, as, and then you have the, the, the Jamaican dance hall culture, you have a lot of, of, of types of dancing in the Caribbean, of contemporary dancing that speak to the recognition of the hip and the oscillation, the, the gyration, and the rotation of the hip. So without further ado, let me talk about 
how it links to self-actualized. I'm talking really fast because I only have 10 minutes, by the way. That's it. I don't have the 18, so I'm going fast. Um, self-actualization. If we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which I'm sure many of us are familiar with, we see that actually we can locate the wine inside of that self-actualization. Because when you think about it, every one of us, if we did put down a nice little good wine, we feel good. <laughs> okay? We feel good. Doesn't matter what the boss said, what the husband said, what the wife said, nothing. We feel good just for that moment. Okay? And that's a moment of peace, of joy, of happiness, of just total abandonment. And it's a good moment. It's a good thing. So the wine, of course, also, you, we know this part of the wine as well. The, fact, the point is that at the end of certain periods of whining, there are more children in the world because of it. <laughs> so at the base of, the, of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you see where the, the wine can locate itself there. But when you go up to the top as well, I think whining culture is the epitome of all of those things. It's vitality. We feel alive when we do it. It's creative. We can do it in our own way. It's self-sufficient. You don't have to whine with anybody. You know, you can whine by yourself and you're good. <laughs> it's authentic because it's yours. It's the way you want to do it in that moment. It's playful because, again, I said it was in the context of recreation or festivities most of the time. It's meaningful because you've assigned your meaning to it for that moment. If the boss was getting you vexed, you could whine on him. <laughs> it's all good. Now, to tell, you <laughs> to tell you how much we invest in our whining culture, let me just give you a few of the names that we associate with it. Wine, grind, jam, back, back, flex, whip, swaps, mash up, throw waste, jock, gyre, dingole, get on bad, bubble, lego, ramage, kick out, brock out, skin out, walk up, fling back, <laughs> wine back, go down, pelt waist, Q, Q, bicycle and tricycle. <laughs> All right? And those are just the ones I have been able to find over in my research in the whining. Okay? So, we're going to ask Elisha and Simeon again to show us just a few, just a couple. Samples. Elisha will demonstrate the bubble and the godong. <laughs> and Simeon <laughs> will demonstrate the flex and the get on bad. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, this is a big, an age old debate in the gender area. Is whining objectification of women? That's a very, very valid and a very, very um, deep discussion that we've had for many years. The answer is probably yes and no, because Inside of the wine, as I said, it's something that makes one feel good. So if women do it and they feel good, then it shouldn't be just objectification. It really should be the fact that they're using their tools, they're, they're, they're embodying their path to self-actualization in the wine. But let's look at, say, for instance, Kitchen Audrey. Now, I, that's just a short name for the Lord Kitchener, Alwyn Roberts, and his seminal, seminal work, Audrey. 
Audrey, where you get that sugar? Darling, there's nothing sweeter. You torture me the way you whine. I like to see your fat behind. <laughs> Done in the 1970s, that, you can't get any more politically incorrect than that, I suppose, for these times. But the fact is, he's done it with adoration and admiration. So you have to take that into consideration before you think it's pure objectification of the woman. We're not stupid, we're not naive. We know that there is that sexual overtone. But there is that sort of path, as I was talking about, that self-actualization path that he is admiring in the Audrey of his day. And then come to the present day now. We're talking about different women who have actually turned the gaze from being from the man to the woman to themselves. They have taken on the power of the wine in a very different way. What they've done is they've started to sing about it, so it's no longer the man singing about the woman that he's looking at. It's about the woman singing about herself. And the person who I think for me embodies that the most is Denise Belfont, because she has taken the wine to a different 21st century <laughs> level. So again, I call on my erstwhile colleagues <laughs> to demonstrate the bicycle wine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that was just a little taste of the innovations in the wine. And I wanted to also thank um, our performers, the little ones. They come from Heather Henderson Gordon's La Danse Caraïbe Dance School. And we have Elisha, we have Simeon, and we have Redman, the master drummer Everett Red Redman Watson. So we thank them. <laughs> And the only other thing that's left for me to do right now is to thank what, whom I believe to be the greatest whiner of all time. It happens not to be a woman. The greatest whiner man across not one but two centuries. There we go. <laughs> so this presentation is dedicated to him. Thank you. <laughs>